Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about the systems of linear equations. So, a linear equation is first of all an equation, but every variable is linear. That means the power is 1. Now, there could be more than two variables for a linear equation. It could be something like x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 equals something. Seven. But in this first case, I will start off with just two variables. So a system of linear equations is a collection of linear equations with the same variables. A solution to the linear system of equations are numbers for x1 and x2, or numbers for your variables, that satisfy both of these equations at the same time. So for example, x1 equals 3, and x2 equals 2 will be a solution for this system of equations. So let's verify. How we verify, we plug it in. So in the first equation, we have x1 is 3, x2 is 2, so we have minus 2 times 2 is 4. That is negative 1, so this one is satisfied. What about this one? x1 is negative 3 plus 3 times 2 is 6. And so we get 3. So the second equation is satisfied. So x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 2 is a solution. So how can we solve systems of linear equations? Well, I'm sure you've done it before. We can isolate a variable, plug it in, and solve for the variables one by one. But let's take a more systematic approach. So the first step that we can do is we can divide this equation by 2 and we can divide this equation by 5 so that our equations become something like this. Now we can multiply this equation by negative 1 and add it in to this equation to get rid of this variable. So when we do that we get x1 minus x1 is 0. Here we'll have 2x2 plus 0, so 2x2. Here we will have negative x3 minus x3, so that's minus 2x3 equals, nothing happens here, 0 times negative 1, still 0. Now we can divide this equation by 2 to make everything nice, so when we do that we get this equation. Now we can repeat the steps once more, so this time I want to get rid of this one. So we can do that by multiplying this by negative 1 and adding it into here. So when we do that, we will get x2 minus x2 is 0, and then we have negative x3 plus 4 is going to be 3x3 equals minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. We can divide by 3. When we do that, our equation will become this. So x3 is negative 1. Now we can keep row reducing. Let's get rid of these two. How can we do that? Well, we can multiply this equation by 4 and add it into here. And then we can uh, multiply this equation by negative 1 to get rid of this variable. So when we do that, we will get this equation. Minus 4 plus 4 is 0. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Plus 0 is 1. And these variables go away. Notice that nothing happens over here because we don't have an x1 and x2. And then we go once more to get rid of this variable. We can multiply this by 2 and add it in. So this will be x1 is 1. So we get x1 equals 1, x2 equals 0, x3 equals negative 1. And so that is our solution. Let's double check to make sure that that is indeed our solution. So uh, 1 minus 0 uh, minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 0 minus 1 times minus 4 is 4, and 1 and negative 1, 1 minus minus 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So that is indeed our solution. Notice that what was important was the coefficient and not the variables x1, x2, and x3. So we can convert what we just did to something called matrix form. From our original equation, we just write down the coefficients. So the coefficient in front of x1 is 1, and then minus 2, and 1, and 0, and then there will be 0, and 2, and negative 8 and 8 and 5 and 0. So I wrote down the coefficients in front of each variable in this order. The order is very important. So this is called matrix form. And the steps that we want to do are called row reduction. So first we can divide each row by a number. So here we divide by 2. Here we divide by 5. When we do that, 
we get these numbers. They look very familiar because that's the same thing as what I did in the equation versions. And then multiply this row by a number to get rid of this. The goal is to first make these numbers all zeros. This is already zero, so there's nothing to do. We want to make this zero. We can do that by multiplying by negative one and adding it into here. And so we get this because negative one plus one is zero. Two plus zero is two. Negative one minus one is negative two. Zero plus two is two. So this row changes. We can divide by two so that this becomes this, and then we can add this in. Minus one times this row into here, that becomes, this becomes this, and then we can divide by three, so that this will become one and negative one. Now we need to get rid of these two, so we will multiply this row by four, and then this row by negative one, and add it into each, so that the matrix becomes something like this. We have one more step, is to try to get rid of this, so we will add it in, two times this row into here, and we finally get something like this. Now, when we have have a matrix with ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, then that is called the identity matrix. And this is called the reduced row echelon form. Now, if you rewrite this matrix into the equation form, what do you get? You get x1 plus 0, x2 plus 0, x3 equals x1, or 1. 0, x1 plus 1, x2 plus 0, x3 equals 0. And 0, x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 is equal to negative 1. So we get our solution set.